Hello everyone, I'm back for my third instalment of this March hair illustration. Just showing you what I've done at the moment. My next stage will be the teapot. I've completed the teacup, which took forever because I was deciding on what colours to use. And I've added a gold frame using mica powder and I've done the pour of the tea as well okay right, let's put, position you back where I had you there you go still getting used to using a tripod right so as I said about mica powders now I bought this mica powder years ago at the Royal Academy. They had a shop um, that was connected to the college. Um, is it Schmiko? It's a very strange name. I'm not sure if you can get it um, or with that actual make, but it comes in a powder, as you can see here. This is what. Um, I've been using and you just add water and it gives this gorgeous almost um, gold leaf like look I quite like it actually it's pretty good now I have penciled in a design on the teapot just so I've got a guide now I've got a um, picture of a Limoges teapot that I'm looking at on the iPad at the moment it's not exactly the same of what I've actually put on the teapot on here but it's just giving me a guide to how I could possibly do it now as, as you know I use pro markers this one this colour I absolutely love it's called soft green there's a lighter one as well, I think it's called tea, it's something, tea Garden or something similar, something very posh. But it's very nice and I've used that for the teacup and I'm going to also use it for the teapot. Now when I actually start doing uh, my illustrating with pro markers I usually go light to dark because you can go over light colours but if you put a dark on it's very difficult to lighten it up you can use a blender now with packs of pro markers now you can buy packs of pro markers they are quite expensive buying packs you can buy a 6 pack or a 12 pack and they usually come in themes I bought the manga one and it was stunning um, but every pack you buy, it will come with a blender pen. Now I've been touch and go with the blender pen because it can leave like um, you know when you put bleach on watercolor, it can you can't control it and it looks. How would I put it? It's like water. You put water on um, water, like droplets of water on watercolor, and it. It just leaves a weird shape. This can be the same. I would experiment with the pro with the blender. I am getting used to it. I use it sparingly. I'd rather blend two colours together than use the actual actual blender to do it. So I, I am still getting used to it. Now I'm going to start with the teapot I'm going to put the roses in first then the leaves and then the background that's where I'm going to start so I'm going to start with a very light dusky pink now this, it, these are different. I went, up, I went to Hobbycraft because, as you know, that's the nearest art shop around for me. Not 100% with it, but I had to go there because I needed some flesh colour 
pro markers because I'm going to try and do Alice. So I needed some flesh coloured um, pro markers. But they didn't have the ones in stock that I wanted. They only had them in the brush markers. Now brush markers, I only started using them on the weekend because I normally use pro markers. Can you see that? Well, this is different. This is called a brush marker. And it's almost like a brush, like you're painting with it. A bit odd. And it's taken me a bit of time to get used to it, but I quite like it actually. They're £2.50 in Hobbycraft, which I didn't think was that bad. I'm hoping that there's enough ink in it and people haven't been using, using them, but we shall see. So I use a dusky pink, which is this one here. Okay, and I'm going to, can you see, it just, instead of a pro marker, let me go and get a sketchbook. This is the difference. Can you see? It's got a bit of give in the actual nib. But with a pro marker, a normal pro marker, can you see there's no give there? So that's the difference. I quite like them. So I may go and get some more of these if I can. It almost feels like you're you're painting. I love it actually. It's really nice. Now the ones I have not tried, which I would like to try, are the water um, pro marker brushes, um, pens. Now they're more expensive. I will have a go at them when I've got some money because um, they are quite expensive. I'm going in with another pink. So that is, which one's this? Rose pink. So I'm going in with a rose pink in the centre and I'm working my way all the way out. And getting a rose kind of look. As I said, you can blend them. So if that if oh yeah, I've got another, that's another thing about pro markers. You've got it's double um, ended, so you've got a thick and a thin. There you go. Can you see that? That's another good thing. The wedge um, nib you can use for bigger areas. Obviously with the thinner nib, do for detail. The one thing I would say is just play with with pro markers, same with everything, with watercolour, with acrylics, oils. Now I, I, I used to teach at the All Saints Art Club in Belvedere. Um, I set that up and some lovely ladies have taken it over and they'll probably remember me doing all the unusual techniques and things like that. I just try everything. Um, I'm a real experimental kind of gal, so I try and um, experiment, and I love it really. You know, just I was terrible at art, art class, um, art school, because I never used to follow the norm. They didn't like me very much there, I'm afraid. I was a bit of a rebel. <laughs> okay, so we're getting somewhere. Just 
keep on layering colours in. Okay. Now, I'm also a fan of Posca. Now, you're probably thinking, what on earth is she talking about here? Like Posca. Okay. There you go. It's the Uni Posca. It's um, Mitsubishi pencils. So, I think that sounds like they're Japanese. Or not. Yeah, made in Japan. It's a paint pen. And this is a white one. I love it because you can put in highlights. The only thing is, once you put the highlight in, you can't go over it with a pro marker. And try not to go over postcard pens with pro markers because they go funny. It's kind of like a weird kind of, um, it reacts. So always go use this at the very end of your illustrating or your drawings or whatever you are doing use the, this at the end okay but I love it and it's, you can get very thin nibs you can get very thin nibs um, this one is a 0.7 you can get lower than that now Hobbycraft have got quite a lot of um, these pens and it's worthwhile having a look Okay, so I might even use the blender just to kind of take out some of the colour on some of the petals. This is essentially what a blender pen does, it takes out the colour. You've just got to be really careful with it because it can take too much colour off and it can make it look streaky and a bit messy. Okay, and it takes a while for it to take that colour out. So what you see when you put it on is different about a minute or two later. So just leave it to do its job, I would say. Okay, so I'm just going to move it over so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. So this is one of my roses. Very... Um, Naive looking, but it goes with the actual teapot design. It's very similar to how I've done it here. You can see. Okay. So, I'm going to continue on with this. And I will make another video at the end. Of this because I, I, mean, I am drawing close to finishing this I really want to get this completed because I, I have another illustration that I'm waiting to do which I've already penciled out and I'll quickly show you as a sneaky peek okay I don't know if you can see her but this is the Art Nouveau pussycat that I'm doing she's very bohemian you see and I'm just starting to draw out all the Art Nouveau detail. And as I said, I will be doing Alice as well to go along with March Hair. So I've got that on the list as well. So I'm being a bit of a busy bee. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye.